would not ordinarily plan to arrive in town if a pirate invasion is expected. But when Paul Marshman and I arrived in Tampa on our Florida road trip, that's what was scheduled. One of the things that I absolutely love about travel is arriving in a town and finding that there's a festival going on. So we arrived in Tampa only to find that we're in the middle of the Gasparilla Festival. What a party! Visit Tampa provided front row seats, but not earplugs, for the arrival of a ship commanded by the mystic crew of Gasparilla, led by the notorious but fictional pirate Jose Gaspar. Although noisy, the pirates are mostly friendly and photogenic types, so I let my defenses down, along with Tampa's residents and other visitors, including the NHL All-Stars. So, never mind the history, enjoy the costumes, the pyrotechnics, and the party as the invading pirate crew and friends paraded down Bayshore Boulevard. Again, Visit Tampa provided front row viewing and refreshments as the various pirate crews and others paraded by, throwing beads and generally making merry with a profusion of beverages to gladden the pirate heart and encourage rowdy but respectable behavior. This is one of the largest parades in the U.S. and a spectacle not to be missed. Not that Tampa isn't worth visiting at other times. It's hip, it's modern, it's vibrant, with several neighborhoods that feature microbreweries and trendy eating spots. Visit Tampa sent us to Colombia, a Cuban Latin restaurant that deserves its high ratings. It's a huge place with multiple rooms and levels. On a Friday night, the place was hopping, the food was excellent, and the service friendly and attentive. Columbia is in the Ybor City neighborhood, where we strolled down a long stretch of restaurants, pubs, cigar, and tattoo shops. Lots of pedestrians and cars doing a Friday night cruise. Tampa has a list of attractions, including the aquarium where we enjoyed watching a variety of aquatic wildlife in appropriate settings. From adorable seahorses in small tanks to sharp-toothed sharks where I lingered in front of a large panoramic window, there's a lot to see, with a significant emphasis on conservation, the environment, and protection of endangered habitats and species. It's obviously kid-friendly, with several opportunities to interact. Like other aquariums, there are some predictable things, and much more that's not. I found the jellyfish to be particularly mesmerizing. The aquarium is at the south end of the River Walk, which travels up the Hillsborough River, past many of the city's attractions, including the arena where the lightning play, the Performing Arts Center, and the Museum of Art. Pedestrians, cyclists, and skateboarders help make Tampa seem approachable and friendly. A touristy tram ride completes the picture of an accessible downtown. Florida, of course, has lots of coastline on both sides. And even on a relatively cool day for Florida anyway, like today, it's still beautiful to be able to take a walk out on the beach and just enjoy the fresh air and the sunshine. There are lots of small communities all along the coast, from the charming little village of Tarpon Springs to Dunedin, Clearwater, St. Petersburg, Indian Shores, Madeira Beach. And although there's lots of development all the way down the coast, there are also public access points and parks. Bush Gardens, while less than the big Orlando parks, remains an interesting diversion. A combination zoo and amusement park with a train that takes you around to the various areas of the park to see the giraffes, rhinoceros, and elephants. Zookeepers are on hand to feed the animals and answer questions if you can tear yourself away from the many coasters and other thrill rides. If it starts to rain, there are lots of places to eat and enjoy a show. A car is a necessity, particularly to get out to the beaches. We stayed at the Godfrey, which although it needs a refresh, is in a pretty spot overlooking Old Tampa Bay. And also the West Wing, where the concierge is a robot. <laughs> 